Welcome to the 2016 FIA European Drag Racing Championship. We're back here at Santa Pod for the first international race of the season. It's the 50th year of this great racetrack. So what have we got in store for you on the show today? Well, towing down behind us, FIA Pro Modified. Mickey Gorkis is defending European champion, but everybody is shooting for him, trying to take him down in 2016. In top fuel, Mickey Kagran is winning for his third straight top fuel title. Pro stop, Thomas Lindstrom is defending champion, but it's unlikely he's going to be around the whole season to defend his crown. So someone else is going to be taking it away this summer. Top methanol dragster, the Harbormans aren't here at Santa Pod this weekend. That's going to make the rest of the season very interesting indeed. It's going to be more wide open than ever. So it's still going to be a very, very quick, fast and exciting season. Let's get on with it right now. Well, Pro Modified for the FIA series was a real dogfight last year, but this man, Mickey Gulquist, took the title again. We haven't made any major changes. We have done some changes. We have fixed some things, and those will be always a challenge to sort out before it goes well. In FIA Pro Stock, the man that killed him with consistency was Thomas Lindstrom, and there was no one happier than him at getting the number one back. Everybody in the field needs to shape up now, not, not just me, everybody, because we want fast racing out there. I want to go out tomorrow and win, but I want to win because we are fast, and I want to win because the other guy is fast, but I want to be faster. Top method old dragsters, last year's champion Dennis Harberman not here this weekend, but front runner Johnny Lag. We're going to do our best here, and we're going to, we have done a lot of work with the engine to be consistent, that's what we think. To be consistent and fairly good, we're going to win it. And the kings of the sport, FIA top fuel dragster, Mickey Kagarad took his second ever FIA top fuel crown last year. Uh, I hope we are going to do it also, but uh, just now we struggle around a little bit, but uh, we test some new parts and uh, yeah, we are back again to, to what we had last year now. So this is qualifying. Before we get to the racing, everybody has to set a time to set the field, as you well know in drag racing. Two guys from the UK, near side of the racetrack. Dave Wilson still desperately trying to retire with the A-field dragster. Far side of the racetrack, first ever event for Rod Harrison. Dave wasn't too bad in qualifying, back down in the 5-4s. Not on that run, though but the car running much more consistently. Trouble for Rod Harrison during qualifying. Let's just hope the team get that straightened out come race day. And more A-Fuel cars near side the racetrack. Johnny Lag, very consistent, but not quite quick enough. Well, in this pair, both him and in the far lane, Chris Polidano from Malta smoked the tyres at the hit of the throttle. Now, Chris Polidano won the championship in 2014, but has sat out the whole of 2015. That must have actually been quite painful while everybody was out there racing. But he's back to try and win the title again this season. He was number one qualifier with a great 5.29. I looking uh, to go more fastest. Uh, yesterday I have 28 miles an hour less, and should be found the problem what happened. And today try to go down. It's, I turn too much up and smoke the tire. On to FIA Pro Modified, the man who was looking to go one better than last season. Matt Eriksson with the Green Goblin still bearing a few scars from over the seasons alongside Bruno Bada, who was looking to go two better than last season. This was qualifying. They both had very strong runs, but Bruno was the strongest down into the fives, and he was your number one qualifier. FIA Pro Stock. Now, these cars look very, very similar to each other, but that is actually Bent Lundahl, who's bought a brand new Camaro for him over the winter from the United States. Going to be going out alongside Jimmy Allen. There are subtle differences between the two, especially if you look on the front, the lights. Jimmy's car's slightly older, but so far it's definitely quicker. 
Jim to the number one spot with a terrific run down in the 6 fives again, 6.55 at 2.12. Bengt Lundahl wasn't actually that far behind, though, in the 6 fives as well. See again in replay, it almost looks like a mirror of each other, actually. Even the paint jobs are similar. We're trying to, to be the fastest car every round because you're, you're racing for points. And those three points that you can get, gather is, it might be worth a lot of in the end, you know. Well, on to FIA Top Fuel. Qualifying was a bit of a hit or miss for a lot of teams, but number one at the end of two days qualifying, that man right there in the eye of the storm, Stig Niergaard. We work really much on the car to get it down the track. Uh, the last run yesterday was pretty good. Car ran perfect. I shoot it off a little bit too early on 3.6 seconds. If I didn't do that, we would have a three seconds yesterday. Well, part of the entertainment package here at Santa Pod Raceway on many of the weekends throughout the summer, one of the reasons the big crowds flock to this place as well. Martin Hill with Fire Force number three, the jet funny car. Yes, that is a jet engine. It's actually out of a fighter plane. Tuned down slightly. But a few things have been changed to give it a little bit more show and go as well. Martin actually had, obviously, a number of these cars, hence this is number three, but he's also got a jet dragster in his stable as well. This is the world's fastest jet funny car. He's been over 300 miles an hour with it. And what you're going to get treated to now is a little bit of the whole show thing that goes on. Lots of flame and smoke. And he even makes us commentators jump on quite a few occasions as well, because we don't know when it's coming either. The show starts behind the start line. He winds the jet engine up higher and higher. There we go. That's uh, Richie, the front man, giving him the sign to give it a bit more oomph. That's a technical phrase. He's actually directed where Martin does the afterburner pops. The crowd always love this one. You can see everybody in the back there smiling their heads off. It's a great bit of entertainment. They give the crew a massive wave and send Martin on his way down the quarter mile in pretty rapid fashion. Check out that scoreboard. What a terrific weekend of highlights. There were a couple more, and both of them were provided by the man there in the Fuel Funny Car. Kevin Kent from the UK, he won the European Funny Car Series last year, but do you know what? He wasn't satisfied, he wasn't going to rest on his laurels. He put in a couple of fantastic runs, culminating in a new European record for Fuel Funny Cars, down in the four twos. Absolutely fantastic performance for him and the West 10 team. Well, it's been a terrific couple of days qualifying here at Santipod Raceway. You can see the teams behind us. That's Erzo Backer's guy stripping everything down in a thousand pieces, getting ready for tomorrow's race in action. That'll be what we're doing when we come back from the break. It's race day here at Santipod. We're ready to go. Full fields of class is going to be coming out here and doing their thing in just a couple of moments. The crowd loads of them here to see the drag racing this weekend. Let's get right to the action. Here on the start line at Santa Pod Raceway, 50th anniversary season with FIA and FIM Championship promoter Keith Bartlett. And Keith, what a start to the season already. Great entries in all the classes, both cars and bikes. It's going to make you feel pretty good. Very good. Sometimes the first round is a difficult one. You know, people have looked at what their sponsorships are and can they compete the whole season. You always worry. You get the entries, but the turnout's fantastic. And the times yesterday in the first qualifying session were just amazing. Everybody's here this weekend for 
the 50th anniversary season at Santa Port. We've got it on our jackets. It's everywhere around the venue as well. Yeah, there's a lot planned and uh, we've got a lot more. We've stepped up a lot more with a new form of television, our web broadcasts have increased tenfold. We're expanding the whole of our social media broadcast, so it's an exciting year ahead. So it's on to the racing. Top methanol dragster up first, Dave Wilson against Johnny Lag, UK against Sweden. The winner of this one gets a place in the final. Johnny Lag with a hole shot, and it looks like he's going to stay out in front, and he does take the win over Dave Wilson. They were very evenly matched in qualifying. But it's race day, that counts. Johnny Lag gets the win like with a terrific run. And see on board with Dave Wilson. You can also see out the left side of your picture there, Johnny Lag streaking away. So on the other side of the ladder, Rod Harrison from the UK. His first ever race in top methanol dragster, alongside the man who was 2014 champ. That's Chris Polidano with the A-Fuel car, the all-dominating this weekend A-Fuel car down in the 5-2s. Chris makes no mistake again, but it looks like finally Rod Harrison is on a good run in the far lane. Chris takes it with a storming pass, but Rod Harrison sets his personal best in a lose-out. I don't think they're going to be too unhappy, actually, about losing that one, the whole team. But the Callants racing gang from Malta, see it again in replay. Chris way out there in front goes 5.29 again. Terrific performance from that team. Rod gave it all he was worth on the other side of the racetrack. <laughs> FIA Pro Mod Semis. Now, Matt Zerickson looking to go a couple better than he did last season. He won the main event a year ago, but he's gone out with a red light again in round one. Same thing that happened at the finals last year. He gives Bruno Bada a gift to move through to the final. Bruno was on a pretty decent run anyway, got a bit out of shape and quite a good driving job. But Matt Zerickson uh, unfortunately threw it all away on the line. And, uh, well, you can see it again. I don't think Matt Zerickson will ever want to see it again. That's another red light for him at Santa Pod Raceway. Bruno Lilly gave it back to him by going over the centre line, though. So, other side of the ladder, far side of the racetrack. I'm so used to saying Nicholas Anderson. It's not. It's Johan Lindbergh in the old 51. Great to see him and the team back here at Santa Pod alongside Mickey G. Looking for championship number. I can't remember how many. And it is Johan Lindbergh that leaves on Mickey Gorkis but gets out of shape, shakes the tyres. Mickey G in the final again. I may have said that a number of times over the years, but uh, Mickey seems to make a little bit of a habit of it. The team shaking hands at the end of that one. Johan Lindbergh, though, and the old 51 guys are going to be tough throughout the full 2016 tour. But it's Mickey G against Bruno Bader in the final. Pro Stock Semis. Jimmy Orland gets a bye run due to the odd lot field. Now, the last thing you want to do is give him and the team a tune-up run to see what they can throw at the racetrack and see what will stick before a final round race. Well, actually, they threw too much at it. Lots of tyre shake off the start line, and Jim is actually off the throttle with the shootout before the finish line. Now, almost definitely, he won't have lane choice for that all-important final round coming up later. You can see the car moving around a little bit. Jim thinks better of it and saves it, saves the team a bit of engine work before now and the final round. Other side of the racetrack, far side, Bengt Lundahl, his first ever time here at Santa Pod, and I think his first ever time in Pro Stock Semis, alongside Thomas Lindstrom, defending champ now. We said earlier, Thomas won't be around for the whole season, and it's such a shame with reaction times like that. He leaves Bengt Lundahl for dead on the start line, and he's still got a car length on him going through the finish line with a slower elapsed time by quite a bit, actually, Thomas Lindstrom takes the win. See again in replay. He's a car length by the time they go past the tree. He's still a car length by the time they go through the finish line. Thomas and Jimmy in the final. FIA top fuel semis. Stig Niergaard, the number one qualifier, did advance in round one. He is going up against Liam James, the hometown boy for the UK on the far side of the racetrack. 
Liam would love nothing more to take his place in the final, but both of them on terrific runs. Liam with a cylinder out at the hit of the throttle and Stig, no such problems at all. Low ET of the weekend down in the threes for the first time. The replay from the back, just a terrific shot. Just look at the tyres on Liam Jones's car. It's Stig though, unfortunately for us, in the final. I say unfortunately for us because we're English, but there we go. We still have one chance to make it one half in English final. Steve Ashdown, his first ever race in a top fuel dragster. And he's going up against one of the biggies again. Mickey Kagarad, defending European top fuel champion. Now, would you believe this is Steve's first ever weekend in this car? And unfortunately for him, it ends there. The blower relief panel pops. He gives Mickey Kagarad a solo run with a wounded engine into the final. Great shame for him. Top Methanol Dragster final. Johnny Lag with Christia Hansen, Ayubili, turning the wrenches alongside Chris Polidano, looking to pick up where he left off a couple of years back. As she's saying that, he didn't win the European finals, which must have smarted. Even though he won the championship, he always liked to go out on a high and win the race. Now, both of these cars, like I said, are A fuel dragsters, which means they don't have a supercharger. They are injected on nitromethane. That's where they get all their power from. As you saw earlier on, Rod Harrison's car is supercharged on methanol. The two combinations are pretty even, actually. There's not too much to choose between them. Well, unfortunately for Chris, problems before he even gets to do a burnout. Johnny Lag is going to be on a solo run to take the event win here at the main event. Well, it certainly looks like a good one. Although part of the wing actually disappears halfway down. I don't think he's going to care. I really don't. I'm sure a new wing will be not too far away after that. He's taken his first ever event win at Santa Pod Raceway. You see again in replay, I think the car shakes a little bit. That must have loosened something, and uh, part of the wing goes skyward. His quickest ever run as well, 5.42 at a huge 275 miles an hour. Well, Johnny Lag, what a great weekend for him and the team. He's never won the FIA crown. Could this be his season? We're trying to get very steady and have a reliable car. We haven't had a heads off all weekend, so <laughs> the motor is running beautiful. And finally, we got this really good top speed right now. My personal best too. Pro modified final. Mickey Gulquist near side of the racetrack against Bruno Bada. Now, unusually, it's actually Bruno that's had the performance advantage so far this weekend. Mickey normally kills him with consistency and quick numbers as well. But it's Bruno off the line first, and he's actually got half a car going past the tree. Can Mickey run him down? The answer is no. Switzerland take the win and the points lead in Pro Modified. What a great weekend for Bruno Bada. He was number one qualifier eased his way through eliminations and pulled a great run out of the hat in the final. That was a side-by-side five-second run for the both of them. Bruno went 5.93, a new personal best. Mickey not far behind at 5.99. You're taking a ride with the winner. In promo at Santa Pod, you know it's always good when you can't see the other guy out the side of the car. At least till past the finish line. Well done, Bruno. Well, surprise, actually, is Mickey Gulquist doesn't leave Santa Pod with the FIA Pro Mod points lead. But you know what? He did that last year and he won by a bunch. So it is Bruno that rolls on with the number one at the moment. I hope we can take the point leads and we see at the next race in Tier. But here, that's the home track from Mickey Gulquist. And, and for me, it's the home track here in Santa Pod. So, final of FIA Pro Stock. Jimmy Orland, Thomas Lindstrom. We've seen this one so many times. Thomas, with the number one on the car, looking to do really well. Even though he won't be racing the full season, due to, hopefully, family commitments. Far side of the racetrack, Jimmy Orland. 
Thomas goes red just that little bit, and it was a little bit too quick, but Jimmy's already gone past him, and Jimmy's on a storming run. Now the clocks say 6.45 at 213. There may have been a slight malfunction there. That wasn't quite that quick, but all the same, still a wonderful way to try and get back the number one on the Camaro for Jim in 2016. The crew still very, very happy indeed, as are Thomas Lindstrom's crew. That's his wife Nina there, and that's the reason they won't be around at the end of the season. Well, Thomas banging through the gears, but unfortunately that time round, it was on a losing run. Well, Pro Stock has a very familiar look to it. Jimmy Orland in number one, Thomas Lindstrom in number two. Let's see if anyone can get Jimmy off that top spot by the end of the season. It's awesome. I mean, I wish I could be every time, but it's been lately, though. We've been good, good luck on this racetrack, and I like coming here. I love it, except for the traveling, but when you're here, it's nice. So the last one, and it's the big one. FIA top fuel dragster, Mickey Kagarad. Number one on the car from last season, up against Stig Niergaard. Stig so desperately wants to win the FIA European Championship in top fuel. A win at the main event would be a good start towards that. Now, Mickey Kagrad had a lot of engine damage. He actually went to the line with a wounded engine in the semi-finals. He kind of got a bit lucky when Steve Ashdown had problems, so he got the green light. This time, it's going to be a full-on race. Staging up here against Stig Niergaard for the win and the big trophy in top fuel. Both of them with big tyre shake, they pedal, and it's Stig who rolls, literally, across the finish line first. He pedalled the car, but you can see there's oil all over those tyres as well. That was a big bang, but I tell you what, you can always blow it up and lose, but it's a hell of a lot better to blow it up and win, and that's what Stig Niergaard there. They both had tyre shake exactly the same point, but it was Stig that got there first. We're happy to get the trophy. And we're special. We are really happy to win here in Sandepot. That is so good place, so good racetrack, so many good people. We really like to be here. So could this be Stig Niergaard's year? Leave Sandepot Raceway with the points lead over Mickey Kagarad. Well, we're done with the racing here for the weekend at Santa Pod Raceway. The man behind us, Stig Niergaard, they're going to have a massive party tonight. He was so happy to win his first ever event here at Santa Pod. He's won before, but in Alastaro, but this one I think is just that little bit special. All the other classes were wonderful to see as well. It's going to be a great 2016. We'll see you all next time.